Hello and welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for week two. I'm your host Gary Smith and on today's show we're going to look back at the Shepherd game on Saturday. Coach and I will break down everything going on in the PSAC as far as schedules and upcoming games and then we'll break down this upcoming week's opponent, the Edinburgh Fighting Scots. Coach, welcome. Uh, Monday morning, uh, Saturday was a heck of a college football day. I know as a coach, you know, you're looking at the result. As a fan, you know, a lot of big plays, a lot of back and forth, but um, Let's start breaking out one thing at a time. Sure. Last week on the show, you asked the fans to show out, and I thought it was a great atmosphere yeah, on Saturday. Great crowd. Really, really excited about the student crowd. It was a red out. Uh, great student section. Obviously, our marching band, cheerleaders, dance team always do a, a, a tremendous job. But really pleased with the the crowd. We, you know, when I got there in the morning, we had recruits on campus. I got there about ten o'clock, and, and the parking lot was jumping, and, and it was. You know, it, it was much appreciated from, from not only me, but from every guy in our program. Yeah, normally on uh, the only time of the year I get uh, texts from the uh, parking lot to say, come out and uh, grab a hot dog is during homecoming. But I had four or five people out there, students from the past and, and present students that were tailgating. So uh, the crowd showed up, great atmosphere on Saturday, great football day. Uh, opponent coming in, Shepard, um, call them the Houdinis of the year. They've been escaping. Each week this year, but they're, they're a second-half team and a comeback team and a, and a good team, and you knew you guys were going to be facing um, a tough test. Yeah, at the end of the day, we just didn't play well enough to, to win the game. We played well enough at times, uh, but at the end of the day, the things that we pride ourselves on is, is kind of what let us down, which is most disappointing to me. Uh, played well at times, did some great things, but overall did not do what we needed to to win the football game and that's the disappointing thing because it was right there for the taking um and for us not to come out on top and to not finish that game is extremely disappointed for me and everybody in the program but we got to get back to work today we got meetings today at, at three o'clock and we'll be on the field at six o'clock to try and correct some of the things that we did wrong and uh try and change the results next week and we'll break it down uh unit by unit we'll start first with the offense uh a lot of big splash plays uh let's just talk about you had I don't know what the records are. It can't be more than five, maybe less than three uh, games where there's been a uh, pass over 90 yards. You had two in the span of about eight minutes. Yeah, uh, Eric Willis and, and Davis Black had a nice little connection going on there. Uh, thought the offensive line played well all day. I thought, you know, the, the one pass you're talking about, the deep post protection was great. You know, and, and we have confidence in our guys to make plays when, when you're throwing it from the shadow of your goal line and you're taking a shot down the field. It was something we had... You know, it's it, it's good for our guys to see this. We had worked that all day. We weren't ha or all week. We weren't happy with it uh, early in the week. And Coach Salisbury devoted a whole period to that play right there, to that route. And obviously, it paid off on Saturday. Eric had, did a tremendous job. He's he's electric when he gets the ball in his hands. We got to find a way to get him more involved. He had six touches for 272 yards, I believe. Um, he had a really good day. But I thought up front, the offensive line kind of dictated. You know, the other one was a screen pass that we had. You know, two blockers out in front that did a great job. We've got an athletic offensive line that can get down the field and, and make some blocks. And, and the second touchdown you're speaking of was, was a little screen pass. Um, so, you know, big plays are great, uh, but we've got to we've got to continue to work. We've got to continue to take care of the football. I thought the difference offensively was our turnovers. You know, the main thing for us is is valuing the football um, and offensively for us to have three turnovers. Uh, it was really the difference in the game. And you, uh, we talked about the splash plays right there, and you took the words out of my mouth because I was going to bring up when you see the highlights of the, the, the long touchdown pass, watch the offensive line because from our, my vantage point in the press box, you had a great view of just seeing how the line was protecting. Vic Black ste steps up, and you just saw that whole play develop. It was a work of art. But you also, two splash plays, but also had a couple really big drives, one drive at the end of the half to go in. Uh, almost ended up end of the first half, uh, which was just a great time killing end of the half type of drive, which I know you value, value trying to get the clock on your side. Yeah, you know, and, and, and great drives. And like I said, I thought the offensive line played well. I thought our running backs did a good job. Obviously, we were without our starting running back, Eric McCann. Uh, he'll be back this week, which is, is good. We rested him uh, this past week. But, you know, we have a freshman in Bobby Boyd that steps up, and, and he's just, just – uh, just under 100 yards. I thought he ran the ball well. I thought Devontae Williams ran the ball well. You know, we protected well. Offensively, we played well at times. Um, you know, the drive before the end of the half, I think we had three drives over, over 85 yards. Uh, it was a great drive. And then we make a mental mistake and, and get a penalty. It's something that, you know, I think we won't do again. Um, 
But you know that, those are learning lessons for our guys. We've got to we've we've got to play smarter football, um, and then it hurts because now we're kicking off twenty yards deeper or fifteen yards deeper than we should have been. Uh, we've got on you know I'm sure we'll switch to the defense here in a minute. There's some things we've got to get corrected over there. Well, real quick before you turn turn over the defense, uh, you mentioned Bobby Boyd. Everyone talking about him coming into this season, talking about his speed, his speed, his speed. But I tell you what, he had some hard yards through the uh, the middle of that line just to show the toughness. Um, 21 carries, 99 yards, touchdown. Um, but like I said, that was the most impressive thing to me. Is like we've heard about his speed, but to see what he could do between the tackles was was eye opening. Yeah, Bobby runs the ball really hard, you know, and, and hopefully we can get him out on the perimeter a little bit more and, and let it let you see that speed. But you know, he he really flashed for us in training camp. He's not he's not shy one bit of contact. He's gonna run. He's gonna run. He's gonna throw his head in there. He's gonna lower his shoulder when he needs to. I thought he did a nice job in protection. That's kind of the next step for him is. Is, is master in our protections, but running the ball, he did a really good job and, and got some really hard yards, um, got some big first downs for. So happy the way he's tracking. He's not he's not there yet. He's got to keep working, but but like the the arrows pointing up for Bobby. And before we turn over to defense, just a few uh, looks at statistics. Davis back Davis Black, 411 yards, four touchdowns. And then you mentioned Eric Willis, six catches, 274, just shy of uh, breaking a, an all-time single game record for Cal. So the offense was on. Um, it was an explosive afternoon. Yeah, we got to get more guys involved. You know, obviously Eric had a huge day. We've got, we've got a stable receivers, um, and probably, you know, you're going to start seeing more of those guys contributing. We need to get more guy, guys involved. I think some of our guys are t playing too many plays right now, the way we ask them to play. Uh, so we got to get more guys involved. We got to get our tight ends involved in the passing game. I think they could be a threat for us. Um, we just we're going to continue to grow offensively, but I thought we took a big step from week one to week two. I thought offensively we played a lot better uh, this week than we did the week before, but we still got a lot of way to go. And switching over to the other side of the ball of defense, uh, coming off of last week, defensive player of the, the week in, in the country, uh, Abraham Zanago. Uh, you knew the other team, Shepard, was going to do what they could to minimize him, and I thought the rest of the unit did a great job of really just putting the quarterback and the, the running backs you know, on alert because it, the, the front seven did a great job just getting in the backfield, controlling plays. Yeah, we, we, we got to tackle better. Um, you know, that's what we're going to preach to our guys about. We had way too many missed tackles. Now, I'll, I'll give Shepard credit. Shepard's offense is explosive. Uh, they've got really good receivers. Their quarterback was a transfer kid that did a really nice job. I thought their game plan was good. They were going to max protect. They were going to get the ball out of that young man's hand. They weren't going to they weren't going to allow us to pressure them. Um, I just wasn't happy with our tackling, and that's something as a coaching staff we got to do a better job of. Um, you know, the, the, and, and kind of what I started the show with. Our main thing, our main thing is is run, tackle, and hit on defense. Uh, our main thing on offense is take care of the football, and those are the two areas that let us down on Saturday. Now, give Shepard credit. Shepard's a really good football team. They're well coached. They believe in in any situation that they're going to they're going to find a way to win the game and they did you know and and there was some there was a few key plays in that second half that you know really really changed the outcome of the game you know we go up i think 11 you know in the second half we give up a kickoff return um it can never happen you know we've got we've got to get that ball down um you know we go up uh we get a pick and, and we get a penalty in, in the red zone you know uh the play the the last interception was was a really good ball. It was a play call that we'd worked all week. It was a really good ball. We just kind of think we mistimed our jump there. And their guy made a great play. It was wide open. And if Eric times his jump a little bit better, he's probably the national player of the week because he's going to have another 70-yard touchdown. So, you know, the ball just didn't bounce our way. But that's, you know, when we talk to our guys, we got to make it bounce our way with how we work, our hustle, our effort, our determination. And obviously Saturday, it just didn't work out that way. And let's take a look at the highlights from this past week's Action Get Shepherd. And after the break, we'll break down this upcoming week's opponent. You're watching The Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV. Black takes the snap in the shotgun, stepping up in the park and going deep down the field and has a man. And Willis able to pull it in inside of Rams territory. Willis to the races, to the 10, breaks the tackle into the end zone. Touchdown, California. 91 yards for Eric Willis the third. Boyd gonna get the handoff and Boyd gonna work his way into the end zone for the touchdown. Bobby Boyd Jr. gives the Vulcans the lead after the two yard run. In the shotgun, back to throw, looking, 
firing deep down the middle. Pass caught into the end zone. Touchdown, California. That's Amari Hopkins pulling in the reception. Morgan back to throw, firing deep down the middle, and that pass is caught. And one man jukes it into the end zone for the touchdown. That's Cameron Dorner. Black back to throw, quick screen pass on the near side. And it's Willis again, and he's able to break three. And there's no way he does it again, right? Willis inside of Rams territory, and he's going to go unfiltered, untouched. 95-yard touchdown for Eric Willis the third. He does it again. <laughs> And that's going to be maybe a house call here as Dorner high steps his way into the end zone and the Rams answer right back. Play action pass into the end zone. Caught for the touchdown, the signal touchdown. That was Hopkins. Black gets the snap. Looking, firing deep down the left-hand side. Trying to find Willis. That pass is going to be picked off by the Rams. Willis tipped it up in the air. And Dante Harrison going to come back with the interception. Harrison going to break a tackle, make his way inside of Vulcan territory. Harrison going to get brought down at the Vulcan 30-yard line. Join us for the 6th Annual Vulcans Athletics Day of Giving, kicking off at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, September 26th, to support Vulcan Athletics. For 36 hours, alumni, family, and friends will have the opportunity to make a gift in support of their favorite Vulcan sports teams. All gifts support student-athlete scholarships. This year, the goal is to raise $40,000. Make a gift and invite others to join you. You make a difference. Go to www.tinyurl.com slash Vulcans Make a Difference to make your gift. A new season of Vulcan football is set to begin September 9th versus Kutztown. September 16th versus Shepherd. September 23rd at Edinburgh. September 30 versus Clarion. October 7th at IUP. Homecoming October 14th versus Seton Hill. October 21st at Slippery Rock. October 28th versus Mercyhurst. November 4th at Gannon. November 11th at East Stroudsburg. All games available on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Suffering from World Cup withdrawal? Well, Vulcan men's and women's soccer has you covered. Come up and watch the region's best soccer teams do battle in a combined 18 home games at the beautiful Phillipsburg Soccer Complex. In addition, three men's and three women's home games will be featured live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans for up-to-date information on all things Vulcan soccer. Vulcan Volleyball is back and you can have the best seat in the house. The Convocation Center will be rocking with 11 home games featuring some of the best teams in the region and the PSAC. All home games will be streamed live on CUTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Digital Network. Follow Cal Vulcans on all social media platforms for up-to-date schedules and information. Vulcan Volleyball and you, a winning combination. Hand off to McCann, and he gets a lane, and he's going to uh, go off to the races as he calls the 25, 50, 10, 5, touchdown, Vulcans! There's the snap, hand off to McCann once again, oh no, play fake, and touchdown, Vulcans! It's Cam Parent, it's going to make it 13 to nothing. He drops the pass and it's intercepted by Noah Dillon. Oh, he's going to win. He's crossed the 50. He left 40. He left 40. Up hit 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Vulcans! Her hand off to McGriff again. Fakes the throw in. Touchdown, Vulcans. Cam Tarrant with the touchdown. And takes the snap, hand off up the middle to McCann, and he's in for his second touchdown of the day. 
Man in motion, and they're going to hand it off to McCann again, and he's going to bounce up field and get knocked right into the end zone for a touchdown. Hands it off to Williams. Williams going to run up the lane, and he's got uh, some blockers and touchdown, Vulcans. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show. I'm Gary Smith, once again joined by Coach Dunn. And Coach, we looked at uh, highlights from last year against Edinburgh. And before we talk about this upcoming week's opponent, let's put a bow on this past week's action. It was the second uh, straight week of crossover action in the PSAC. Uh, other scores around the conference. Kutztown beat Mercyhurst at home 47-14. Westchester beat Gannon 38-31 in Westchester. Probably the... Uh, the craziest ending of the week goes to Lockhaven at Clarion. Lockhaven wins on a flea flicker uh, as time expires to be Clarion 21-20. East Stroudsburg uh, at home beats Seton Hill 55-21. Edinburgh goes to Bloomsburg and wins 23-13. Shippensburg uh, loses to IEP at IEP 49-14. And then Slippery Rock beats Millersville 21, or excuse me, 42-21. to um, And coach, after the second week of uh, crossover play, just we talk about this every year ad nauseum, but just goes to show how balanced the conference is that after three weeks of the season, two weeks of crossover play, there's only three undefeated teams in the PSAC. Yeah, really good coaches in this league, really good football being played right now. It's, it's, it's a really balanced league. You know, I think probably when I first got here uh, several years ago, it wasn't as balanced as, as it is now. I mean, there's, you know, every team every week, it's not coach speak, can, can, can win. You know, it, there's just examples of it every week and, and games coming down. To the fourth quarter. I tell our guys all the time, this is a fourth quarter league, and a lot of those games came down to the fourth quarter. I told them our game would come down to the fourth quarter on Saturday. Um, that's just the way it's going to be in this league, and, and great balance across the, the whole league, both east and west. And speaking of the west, there's always, in my opinion as a fan, uh, there's always two, other than homecoming, there's two days I look forward to, season opening game, but also whenever the calendar and the schedule flips over to, to divisional play, sure. because that's, you know, no matter what happens in the first three weeks, if you take care of what you need to take care of the division, there's still a lot out there for, for the team. And this is the first week of divisional play. California travels up to Edinburgh, as we've had every year since, I believe, 1923. <laughs> You're right. Um, and, and contrary to popular belief, Coach and I were not at the first couple games no. in the 1920s. So, um, but Edinburgh uh, looks to be improved this year. The, they, yeah. they played a tough Duquesne team um, on the road first week. Then they lose by seven to Shepard, and then they got a win last week. So... I know you've been watching film for the past couple yeah, of days. What do they look much like? Much improved on team. I tell you, offensively, they've got they've got some explosive guys. Uh, they're they're one wide receiver number zero is an explosive guy. Their their tailback is is a guy kind of like Bobby Boyd. He's a he's a home run type guy when he gets on the edge or he gets out in open space. The quarterback's doing a really nice job of of allowing his weapons to to make plays for him. You know, against Shepard, they had. You know, two really long runs, um, you know, and, and they've got some fast guys outside. They're, they're doing a really nice job offensively. They kind of, you know, keep you off balance, run to pass. They're, they're a very balanced offense, and, and they do some things that are really nice. So much improved defensively, flip it over, very active. You know, they're going to blitz. They're going to blitz safeties. They're going to blitz corners. Uh, you know, strong up front. Uh, linebackers are, are, are solid, That guys that can run and tackle, physical type kids. So it's going to be a test. They're, they're a much improved team. You know, I, I think that week one game against Duquesne, they just turned the ball over. It wasn't, you know, and it's just one of those, sometimes that happens in college football. You, you, you get a couple turnovers and, and things don't go your way, and it kind of snowballs on you. You know, they go and play Shepard to a seven-point game. Uh, and really had some opportunities in that game. And then they go out to Bloomsburg this weekend on the road and get a big W, uh, kind of convincing W um, on the road. So really, really improved team. You know, their, their coaching staff, I believe this is probably year three for them. So they're starting to really get their, their guys, their recruits in, um, you know, into their junior and senior year. And sometimes it takes time, and, and, but they're doing a really nice job. I know you can really see the, the, the growth in that program from the first year that coach staff got here to now. Um, that they're really, you know, you got to look at them each week. Because like I said, I was watching, um, watched a little bit of the Shepherd game uh, before this week to, to look at Shepherd, and then I was seeing them. And they, I mean, that was, it was eye-opening to see the change yeah. that, that's been just in the last, six, uh, last 
year, not six months, twelve months. Right. Yeah. And, and they're good on special teams. They got a, they're probably a, you know they got an All American punter returning. He also does their kickoffs for them. Uh, their head coach is a special teams guy. He's going to try and create advantages. You know, last year they got a an onside kick against us, uh, schemed up and did a really good job. They're going to bring pressure on punts. They're going to bring pressure on field goals. They take great pride in their special teams. So that's one area that we're going to have to improve in this week. Um, if we want an opportunity to go up there and have success, we've got to get better at special teams. And another caveat, usually by this point in the season, you've already played a road game. The team knows the whole routine, get on the bus, you eat, blah, whatever, eat, get on the bus. Uh, how much more of a challenge as coaching staff is it for, your, for you and your guys to you know, get the team ready to go on the road for the first time and in a divisional game. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I'd, I'd rather play all, all of our <laughs> games at Adamson Stadium. But, you know, sometimes it's good to get off campus, too. We're going we're gonna to head up Friday uh, afternoon. Sometimes it's good to get the guys away and, and, and do some team stuff and, and be able to spend some time in a hotel with just us. So, you know, that's, that's not new, usually a bad thing. You know, it's sometimes the distractions of home games can, can be a little bit much. When we get on the road, you know, it's, it's something that, that let, we're going we're gonna to embrace it. And the good thing about uh, everything is the fans, the Vulcan fans can embrace a nice road trip up to Edinburgh. It's a two and a half, maybe two hours and 25 minute drive from here to Edinburgh. Um, cheer on the Vulcans. It's, uh, the stadium is one of the better ones in terms of vision stands. You're right there. Yep. You can uh, support the Vulcans. If you can't make it, if you get the doctor's excuse from Coach, uh, CUTV and WCAL will have you covered. Uh, it'll be noon live on the PSAC network and also CTV Sports 1. And before we wrap up, Coach, I'm just going to tell the fans the rest of the schedule this week. That way, in case uh, they're driving home or whatever, right. they can keep, keep track of what else is going so on. That's so. one of the, the great things about this league is you'll see all kinds of buses on 79 this weekend with teams, you know, in Erie and at Mercyhurst and Gannon. And, and, you know, then you get those turnpike games where it's just <laughs> the, whole, the whole conference is traveling. It's, it's, it's a good deal. It's like Coach is seeing my notes because I was just going right. to say there are, <laughs> there there's going to be three college football games kicking off at noon within about 20 miles one, of one another. Of course, our game at Edinburgh, uh, Clarion will be traveling to Gannon. IEP will be going to Mercyhurst. Slippery Rock will be going to Seton Hill. That's all the games in the west. And then over in the east, Westchester at Millersville. Kutztown at Shepherd. East Stroudsburg at Lock Haven. And then Bloomsburg at Shippensburg. Um, but just a great slate of action sure. on Saturday. But once again, the, the only game anybody watching here should worry about, noon at Sox Harrison Stadium. Once again, come on up. I know Coach would love to see the red and black behind his team. But again, if you can't be there, um, watch us and listen to us on CUTV and uh, 91.9 FM WCAL. And finally, Coach, what is your uh, message to the team going into this weekend for this week of practice? Yeah, we just, we just got to continue to improve. You know, we've got to continue to improve in all areas. I think special teams is going to be a huge emphasis for us because Edinburgh likes to create opportunities through special teams. Um, defensively, we got to tackle better, and offensively, we got to take care of the football. We're turning the ball over too much. You know, we had the, the number 14th ranked team in the country on the ropes here. And turnovers really hurt us. You know, when you turn the ball over uh, three times and, and give up a kickoff return, you're, you're not going to have success against good college football teams. And Shepherd's a really good football team. So we've got to get those things corrected. I know our guys are going to work. Uh, there's, there's not a doubt about that. So we just got to be, you know, diligent in our work and, and take care of the things that we can control. And that about wraps up. Thanks, Coach. Uh, good Appreciate luck this week in practice. And then, like I said, fans, come on out. Uh, make the drive. If not, CTV Sports 1 and WCA will have you covered at noon on Saturday. For Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. You're watching The Gary Dunn Show right here on CTV.